Hey, great main riff in this one. Check this out. Uh, I'll add the drums just for fun. One, two, three, oh, ow. And that's about 80% of the song right there. Welcome back, Shane here from Guitar Work. Glad to be back. This is Jackson Brown's Running on Empty 1977. And I just looked, and this is, I think, video number 210 I have done. Video number 210, holy moly. And uh, thanks for coming back, guys. Thanks for your thumbs up. They've meant the world. Your comments, your suggestions, and even sometimes your complaints. Now, on this one, uh, many, many requests for this one over the years. Uh, most recently by uh, Dean from Patreon. Dean, thanks for that a couple of weeks ago. And uh, glad to do it. Jackson Brown has always been one of my favorite songwriters, singer-songwriters. And this song is just great. Now, I'm well aware, I'm well aware that uh, there's an open tuning uh, option as well. I'm doing this in a regular standard tuning. Okay, just regular tuning. You don't have to tune anything. I know if you're watching other videos, there's lots of great videos out there where they're going to talk about how to do it and you're going to have to change a bunch of strings. A lot of us, or most of us, having spoken to a lot of you, uh, don't want to do that. Okay, you just want to stay in standard tuning and go from song to song. That's perfectly viable. The sound sounds great this way. Okay, and it's fairly easy. Um, I'll send you to Patreon. As always, patreon.com. I've got three sheets here for you. Two song sheets and one details page that I'll be referring to the whole time. Uh, again, this is video number 210, and uh, Patreon, as I keep on saying, it doesn't have to be a lifelong commitment. Um, there's a ton of songs I've put up there. You can get a sheet music for tons and tons of songs and all the playalongs we do together um, and play along to all of these videos. So good on you. Hope you'll go do that. So many of you have, and we can also communicate there as well. So patreon.com slash guitar work, and I'll be using the fabulous Beat Buddy, as always, from Singular Sound, proudly affiliated. And later on, we'll even use the Aeros Looper to get you looping a little bit. Ton of fun. Uh, I'll add a little scale stuff at the very end as I often do because a lot of you are learning lead at the same time. Um, the main riff in this, I've bracketed, you'll see a D slash A and an A bracketed together. That indicates that it's this riff, this main riff. Now, there's a D slash A, you'll see it on your sheet there. Really, we just have a main riff and a couple other chords to strum here. That's your D slash A. Um, you've got a third finger there on the fourth fret of the D. You've got your first finger there, second fret of the G. Your middle finger is on that B string. And I'm now I'm barring sometimes diagrams, although the, there is a fingering underneath. Uh, sometimes it does. It's not really clear that you should be barring that first finger is barring the top three strings, or four, or even four strings, sorry, like that, because we're going to be going from there to an A, and that is the main riff. And if that is new to you, you really want to know that. It happens in a million songs. If you listen to a lot of Stone songs, uh, you're going to hear that a lot, a lot, a lot. So that is D slash A and going to an A. Now notice the A, I'm barring it. I'm not playing A as I would normally would, like this. A lot of us play like this or even with different fingers, doesn't matter. That is because it repeats so often. And then I'm just right back on. So what you might find is uh, you're going to you want to stand up and I'll call it a, it's a terrible term, but a knuckle bust. You want to bust your your first knuckle there like that. And because you want to hear that high E string open. Now that's probably going to be the battle for most of us. At first you might get this. And, he, and he's going to refuse to stand up. Uh, just try to avoid the high E string in your strum if that's the case. It is better to get to stand him up and then feel that. I, even with the length of these fingers, I got to get my, my elbow way down to facilitate that. You may find the same. All is fair, whatever you got to do. Um, so some of us should even stop tape right there and just work on that because that is 80% of the song. That is your main riff, okay? For sure. And uh, we're going to do that. Now, What what is the strum on that? You're going to see on your detail sheet, you are going to see uh, the main riff strum is on the, on the D slash A, which means a D chord with an A in the bass. I know it doesn't look like a D, but that is a D with an A in the bass. You're seeing the strumming pattern. It's going down, down, up, down, up, down, up. Now what's going on, you'll see the D slash A written in a little accent marker on beat one and also the end of four. That's where we hit harder to get that. So we get A, loud, soft, and that upstroke is loud. If you haven't accented on an upstroke before, you may find that your body just does not want to do it. It prefers to accent on downstrokes. Um, it's called syncopation, typically when you're accenting on an up. And you may fight it at first, but keep at it. It's well worth it. Um, and now that continues. I'm going to go, and when it goes to the A, it's going to come in on the and of one of the next bar. Okay? You don't, maybe don't think about it. Just check this out. Here it is written down for you. Down, down, up, down, up, down. You come back on 
A chord, you come back on an upstroke. So again, where I've written those little things where the chord name is written over top, that's where you accent. The other stuff is just percussive fill. So you get loud, soft, 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 L and ah. so The other ones are just whisper strums to kill time. We gotta have those whisper strums in there, otherwise we, did, we only have this. And you got all that space, right? So you gotta... do four main riffs together and stop tape afterward if you need to really slowly guys here it comes in one two three four repeat one more Uh, you may have had to stop and put your fingers, you know, one at a time until you get used to that chord. That's why I'd recommend stop tape there and get that down. That is the meat of the song right there. Um, there's a, Now, the other chords that you're seeing at the end of... Now, that's your main riff, which is your verse section and also your most of your chorus as well. And it's at the end of sections where you see things, other things happen. In this case, uh, in the intro, you're going to see an F-sharp minor. You're going to see three main riffs that we just did. And now F-sharp minor, which is your easiest bar chord. You've seen that guy there written down for you. And uh, if it helps you notice my middle finger is on top of my first finger helping to squish that down. And when he gets to that, it's just literally down, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, up. And you're seeing a regular D. And here's the only other chord that might be new to you. A slash C sharp is this guy. Now you can use a regular A, okay? You can use a regular garden variety A, no problem at all. This will be closer to the recording you're gonna find. As an A, sorry, say a, on the A string, the fourth fret, A slash C sharp on the D string, or on the A string there, and your first finger is doing that trick where it's barring again. So it's a little bit, uh, a little bit uh, what, what, um, impressionistic, rather right? A is, consonant but this has got when you see a slash chord like that it typically means something's going on in the bass that's worth preserving so be aware of that um, but go to a regular a if it's easier for you for now and then there's an e good so let's play our intro together you sing on top d to a the main riff three times and then the f sharp minor bit that we just played i'll call them out okay going very slowly here's your d slash a intro two three four one Number two. Number three. F sharp minor. Here we go. One, two, three. Two of them. There's a D. A slash C sharp. Here's an E. Two E's. Lo and behold. Uh, in the first verse, vocal comes in, and you get your main riff one, two, three, four, five. It's gonna be six times before there's a walk down. Let's play the first verse together. Here comes the main riff. Uh, how many times again? Six, two, there you go, and again. Second line. Looking back at the years gone by. more. In 65, there's an A, E slash A, and on one. Uh, here's your last line D, A slash C sharp, and here's an E. There we go, and then you're into your chorus. You've seen all you're going to see in a song except for the little bridgey bit, okay? And the bridgey bit, there's no new chords in it. You're seeing, at the bottom of page one, you're seeing some chords have squares around them. Square, the square means on this chart anyway, is to push, to come in early on that chord. In this case, it's the and of four, okay? So you'd be coming in on an upstroke and you'll feel the whole band on the recording kick there. I'd encourage you to listen to that. It starts on a regular F sharp minor that is not surrounded by that box. So it starts on beat one. Here's about everyone I know, everywhere I go. So lyric bottom of the page one, go to F sharp minor, bridge. Now here's a D. It came in on the upstroke. Okay, I'll do that again. Here's F sharp minor. Two, three, four. D on the up. E on the up. A on the up. 
Okay, I'll do that again. First line of the bridge one more time. Here's F sharp minor. Three, four. D on the up. Push. E on the up. Push. A on the up. Push. Second line of the bridge. F sharp minor. Normal. Not pushed. E. D. Not pushed. And here's an A. Not pushed. Third line of the bridge. Normal F sharp minor. Push the D to E. E push it. A push. D not push. Last line of the bridge. Here's an E and a D. Now, there's, a, there's two walk downs that are really cool. Okay, it says in the bottom of page one there. At the end of the bridge, walk down number one. You're going to see on your detail sheet, walk down number one. I'm going to strum the D. Abandon the chord and go to the fourth fret of that A string. Second fret, open. Second fret of low E. And then OE, open. And now it sounds this way. Now that's a nice little riff. Bow, bow, bow. Um, if it helps you, when I need to isolate certain notes uh, with the right hand, I tend to rest the right hand there. Otherwise, I'm missing and uh, things get pretty sloppy. So I tend to rest. And in this case, you got to come out of a strum and find that happy spot. Let me do the last line of the bridge and try to throw that walk in again. I know I'm going quickly here. It might be the caffeine, but hopefully um, stop tape where you need to and peck away at it. We'll do a slow play along in just a sec. So here's the last line of the bridge and into the walk down. So. D, here's an E. Walk down here. And then on page two, I'll have to scroll as back to the main riff. Okay, uh, that's your walk down. Again, stop tape there if you need to work that out. Um, while you're now, we always talk in these play alongs about different levels of knowing the song. If you have to skip the walk down, that's okay. I'll play it and you can wait and just stop. Stop on your uh, D, play the D and then stop. Boom, 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 boom. Imagine it and then come back on the main riff. And you know, there is value to that because you're having to maybe not consciously count it, but you're having to keep track of where you are on what you're missing. Boom, 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 boom. boom. You got to come in on time on the main riff. So there still is a real time value to doing that. Uh, the, the second walk down is much easier. You'll see that at the end of the. Uh, She's at the very end of the song there. Um, the la last lyrics, run into the sun, but I'm running behind. D walk down number two is more like, I hate to say like a let it be kind of um, uh, walk down. Again, that's one strum on a D. You see that on your detail sheet, one strum on the D. And then fourth fret of the A, second fret, and then strum an A chord. Bow, 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 again. I know you've heard that before, right? In this song and many others for sure. And skip it if you need to, okay? The slow, now the song comes in at 137 beats a minute. And I'm using the pop 12 uh, pattern. How did I, uh, I think a lot of you know this, but how did I know what pattern to use? If you go to the Singer Sound website on the, for the Beat Buddy, um, if you go to the Singer Sound website and you go to the Beat Buddy menu, you're going to see a song matching tool there. I just typed in, I go to that and then I typed in uh, Run It On Empty and it came up. So 137 beats per minute and told me what pattern to use. And uh, so at 137 for the slow play along, I'll bring it down, I'll take 20 points off as we often do. And I'll go down to 117 here. It's as easy as dialing this up right here. 117 beats a minute. And uh, let's do it up to including the end of the uh, second chorus, okay? On the first page, the end, we're going right up to the end of the second chorus just before the instrumental section. If you're looking at your sheet, here's the intro. The slow play along. Remember, the value is real time, real time. We got this th main riff three times. We're in the intro, very top of page one. This guy's going to count us in. Here it goes. One, two, three, four. Number two. Three. F sharp minor. Here we go. Oh, one. slash C sharp. Here's an E. First verse, main riff. Looking out at the road. That's it. Second line now. Looking back at the years. So many summer feels. Third line. Coming, fourth line, A slash.
slash C sharp. Use an E twice. Chorus, main riff. Again. F sharp minor. Second verse coming. Main riff, there we go. Gotta do what you can. Just keep your love alive. Next, yeah. Second line. Fuse it. Third line, 69. Oh, it's 21. Again. And over C sharp, here's an E. Second chorus. Okay, great. Now that, okay, that brings us to, uh, we'd be at the instrumental section with the guitar souls, etc. Um, hey, you need to be able to do that before we, you go to the full speed, right? This is 20 beats faster per minute. So I'd highly recommend uh, doing it in real time like that. And you know, you know what you got to work on. Maybe that, that new chord, a D slash A, maybe you just can't quite get there or something. So that's what to work on. Peck away at it and come back and do the, uh, the play along later on. So we'll go back up to 137 here. And we'll invoke the arrow slooper afterwards, but let's do a full length play along here. Am I forgetting anything? I don't think so. Uh, in the bridge, we got the pushes. No, 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 I think we're good. Um, I'll have to scroll after the first walk down, so it's, there's going to be a bump there. But if you go directly to the main riff, you can cover me, okay? I know there's a pedal. Somebody commented, thank you for that, that there is a pedal that you can get to attach to an iPad, that you, you kick it and it, it brings the page for you, it scrolls, which is amazing. I'm going to look into that. And uh, in the meantime, so we're back at 137 full length play along. Grab your sheets, patreon.com slash guitar at work. The Beat Buddy, the fabulous Beat Buddy is going to count us in. All the links are below for all this stuff, guys, as well. And uh, if you use the promo code GAW10, you get 10% uh, off at checkout. It helps to support the channel. I appreciate it. So many of you are grabbing Beat Buddies. There's several to choose from. Grab the one that meets your budget, etc. I'm using the full version here. And uh, I'm always playing with it. Always, always, always. It's way more fun than a metronome. The Beat Buddy, you look down below, you'll see the links. Um, here we go. So get set on your main riff. Fingers are ready to go. And here comes the count in. One, two, three, ow. Intro. There's three of them. One more. F sharp mod, here we go. And a one. B. A slash C sharp. Here's an E. First verse coming. Main rip. And there we go. Second line now. Looking back. The year's gone by. So many summer fields. Third line. 65 over 17. One, one, one. Last line there. A slash C sharp. Here's an E. First chorus. Main rip. That's it. F sharp minor. End of the second chorus there. Second verse. Here we go. Gotta do what you can. Love alive. Try not to confuse it. To survive. 69. 21. I call the road my own. D, regular D. A slash C sharp with the road. E turned into the road I'm on. Second chorus. Here we go. Main run. Running on. Again. I'm blind. F sharp minor, here we go, and a one, two. Now, instrumental section, main riff three times. It's like your intro. There's two. There's three. F sharp minor, here we go, and a one, two, three. There's a D. A slash C sharp. Here's an E out. Now, bridge coming, get ready, one. F sharp minor, push the D. No, push the E. A, push. Regular F sharp minor, no push. Short. Three, two, three. A, F 
Third line, third line of the bridge, D, e, push it. D, e, push it. It will be alright. Last line of the bridge, D. E. e, walk down, number one, here we go. One, two, three, four. Main rip, page two. Crazy this life feels. For the friends that I used to turn to, pull me through. D coming, look into their eyes. E, I see the light. Chorus. In the chorus, there, second page. F sharp minor. Main riff. Is D over A? You really tempt me. You know the way you look so kind now. Regular D here now. Love to stick around. Walk down number one. D, you know I don't even know what I'm hoping to find. Walk down. D, running into the sun. Walk down number two. Two, outro, main rep. Three, four, go. Twelve times. Yep, 12 times. Two. There's three. And four. There's five. Big guitar solo. There's six. And there's seven. Big long outro, eh? Now, probably if you're just playing it by yourself, you're just one guitar player singing it or whatever, you probably wouldn't do that long an outro unless you have another instrument that is soloing to keep it interesting, right? Um, or that maybe your, your friends are singing, whatever the case may be, singing the chorus round and round. Um, I know that was fast. That was fast. That is our full speed run through. It's 137 beats a minute. And uh, now, for those of you that want to learn some, that are, have been telling me that you've been enjoying the least stuff at the end, um, You've probably seen this scale before. I'm going to invoke the Eros Looper here in a second. Um, yeah, I'll do that right now. I'm going to get set. I'm going to I'm going to loop the uh, I'm going to loop the main riff. Here's the scale. You'll see that down at the bottom it says A pentatonic major or major blues. You'll often hear it called. I'm going to start with a picky. It's going to seem familiar in a sec. Second, third fret, fourth fret, second, fourth, second, four, five, two. Five, two, five, and backwards. Five, four, two, four, two, 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 two. A lot of you will recognize that scale as starting from that. These blues scales, they have always have a major function and a minor function. In this case, this is A pentatonic major. Great sound for sure. Um, and there's an extension as well I've written in four, five, six, tuck under, five, seven, five, seven, eight. And then again, four, five, six, five, seven, five, seven, eight, seven, five, seven, five, six, five, four. It's the same scale in different locations. Um, there's a lead line that he does in the in the intro. Let's get that sucker going in a sec. So and you're seeing that slide. I'm going to go ring finger to the fourth fret of the G, sliding up to the sixth fret. Now, if sliding is new to you, you have to decide how hard are you pushing. If you're pushing too hard, too much drag, and you're going to miss or you're just not going to slide at all. So you're going to find out how much pressure it takes to keep the note alive, and yet also give you some mobility. So that ring finger is doing that. You'll see the number circle underneath. Those are your left hand fingers, and I'm going four to six, and then a middle finger. I'm going to keep them there. The middle finger. It's going to the fifth fret of that B string. That's in your extension. And I'm going to slide back the way I can, six to four. And then to the second fret to end it. So again, in a 
again. So if I get, let me get the main riff looped. And this is the Aero Slooper again by Singular Sound. We always talked about this one. Gold edition, silent buttons. I love this thing. Big graphic screen on it. Connects directly to the Beat Buddy. You plug the Beat Buddy into it and they talk. I'll press go on the Beat Buddy and it'll do a, that cool little fill, which is really a, a clever count in. And then it starts recording. So I don't, it's a no brainer. Um, I'm going to start to get main camera. One, two, three, four. I'll do it again. There we go. Look, mono heads. Good chicka. Now, um, here's a scale. Even a scale just by itself sounds good. Extension. That's not improvising, that's just the scale. So that's where to start with these things. Here's the, the, the lead lick. Two, three, four, bound. There's again. Again. Love it. Love it. And um, now that's so, so it's a bit of vocabulary. Scale is just a scale, but it can be fun to play along with for sure. And uh, it's really great for your fingers. Chord shapes, they, if you're having trouble with some of those new chords today, um, sometimes if you don't work on scale stuff, uh, your hands kind of move as a clump, you know, as a as, you know, chord shapes. But um, individualizing each finger like you do when you're playing a scale is really helpful because it wakes each finger up. We've got a couple of sleepy fingers. You may notice that your ring finger and your pinky are not the, the clever, cleverest fingers. Typically not as clever as your first and second, so they often need a bit more work. It's worth doing. You throw a movie on or something, you just sit and play the scale. You don't have to sit down and use your valuable practice time. You can just literally go up and down like that while you're watching a movie or baseball, whatever you like. So, hey, that is Jackson Brown's Running on Empty. Again, I counted them up. Video number 210. Head to patreon.com slash guitar. Grab a bunch of song sheets. Go to see other videos we've done and uh, keep keep uh, emailing me. Uh, thanks for your thumbs up. I appreciate it. That is the currency here on YouTube land for sure. And um, thanks for the good people at Singular Sound for the uh, Aero Slooper and the Beat Buddy. They are constantly working here at Shane's Guitar and uh, loving it. So um, from Guitar Work, I thank you very, very much, guys. We'll see you again very, very soon. What? Two thousand.